time for a cup of tech gumbo. Time to welcome in Haggai Davis. Haggai, what's happening, man? I'm excited for another great Friday. Before we get started, I, I got to reference what we, because I, I just openly like laughed on the air at something that was completely disjointed if you're listening on air. And, and that is, um, as I was coming in, a, a, a toss to the forecast from Marissa Nuzzo. We have a laptop in this building, in this uh, studio that was made somewhere during the Coolidge administration. <laughs> Oh, and no, it, it was at least George W. Bush's administration. You think it's W? You think it made it all the way to HW? Yeah. I can go for HW. Um, you know. It's it, not even a Dell. It's a dull. It's, 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 it's old. It's old. Yeah, it's old. It's, it's. Anyway, that, that happens to be, uh, not many people okay. know this. Who's older, Alondra or the laptop? That, ooh, that's close. I think it comes down to the month. <laughs> I think that laptop was the one that, w that Matthew Broderick played, uh, played chess on. In war, games? In, in war games, yeah. Uh, could so be. That's, that's the whopper. Oh, that that's is. That's the whopper right that's there. That's the whopper, all right. Anyway, the laptop was overheating and the fan was going, and I'm rebooting the laptop, and as I come back in, Haggai says, I thought that was just a white noise machine. <laughs> it's just so perfectly timed. It's so under the radar. So anyway, that's what that was all about. Uh, Haggai, San Francisco police have decided they don't want killer robots. Yes, we talked last week that they, you know, they were going to. I know. I was excited. Yeah, they were gonna. Uh, they were gonna let these robots. They were gonna put a bomb on the end of it, push it in. You know, go blow up a building because uh -huh. the bad guys in there or something. And then once the media kind of started releasing the story, and the citizens of San Francisco started finding out that this was being approved, some of the different council members were receiving negative responses from the electorate. <laughs> And so they've they've backed off their vote now, and they're going to send it back to committee for further study. Uh, which means it's dead. Oh yeah, it's and never. They've blown up the robots. Yeah, uh, there were so many different ways that this could go sideways, though. It just was fascinating to me. Number one, that if this was some, in San Francisco, they were going to do this. I mean, that's just just completely mind numbing to think that San Francisco would allow this to happen. Why? Because that's not what San Francisco is. I mean, you know, peace, love, you know, height, Asbury. I mean, this was, you know, that's, that's, that's you know. San the long-term effects of heavy drug use, the homelessness, the mental illness, all of these things lead to people stepping over the edge and maybe needing to be blown up by a drone. That's right, but not San, San Francisco. You don't do that in San Francisco. I mean, it's, that's the, you know, the crazies live out there. They don't, they don't. I know. <laughs> Sometimes there's a bunch of crazies. Someone's got to deal with it, and who are you gonna call? Yeah, you know, don't don't send the the robot in to go do it. You gotta go in, go in and do it yourself. You gotta go in and talk them, uh, talk to them, and uh -huh. help them understand uh -huh. that they're wrong. You know, I I I'm hearing everything you saying you're saying, and none of it's computing over here. Uh, I get it. I just I really really wanted. I I just fascinated a that. bunch of tiny little Judge Dreads flying around San Francisco. Yeah, just the, but but just the fact that. You know, oh, well, when you're in the, the the council chambers and you're voting and the public isn't paying attention, you can have that that opinion. But then all of a sudden, the San Francisco Chronicle writes a front page article about it. And, oh, uh, well, you know, maybe I don't want to vote that way after all. Maybe we'll 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 not go the technology route. We'll stay the analog and let the guy pull the trigger. I mean, I just silly. Yeah, it is. It was fun while it lasted, though. Yeah. It was fun. Um, so there's a, um, a a couple of bigger topics we're going to get to. Uh, one of those is coming to us from, where, where'd it go? The European Union. I want to talk about the ads in the EU. Oh, yeah. Oh, here we go. Meta needs explicit user consent to run personalized ads, EU watchdog rules. Well, so the official vote and, and the ruling has not been released. It's, it's due to come out on Monday. But Reuters and the Wall Street Journal are both reporting that this is actually going to happen. So what this means is that before Meta or even Twitter or, or any of the social media platforms in the European Union, the, the article picks on, on Meta and or, and or Facebook, but every one of the social media platforms, if you're going to do advertising targeted advertising you have to ask me is it okay for me to show you an ad on a ford pickup truck and if i say no then you just have to start randomly showing me whatever advertising i want or whatever you want to show me instead of the more profitable 
targeted advertising. Profitable or effective? Well, it's more profitable because I can because Facebook can charge more if they know I'm interested in a, in a Ford pickup truck. So, if they know that I'm not interested in feminine hygiene products, then it's not they're not going to be able to sell that ad very much to to the, these people who are wanting to advertise. And because if I see that, I'm I'm certainly not going to click on it. But if I'm interested in that Ford pickup truck, then then they are going to be more. They're going to be able to charge more for that ad. Mm-hmm. And so it it really can it's going to change the bottom line on because in the Apple iPhones already have that capability on Facebook right now you can opt out and say no don't send me targeted advertising I do that on every app I've got and and so because of that mm-hmm. Facebook's advertising revenue is taking a major hit I'm, I would imagine well now if you take a whole continent. And you you start pulling this plug once, and, and it, it just seems like this is going to snowball out of the EU, and other countries are going to start doing this, too. And I, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I wouldn't be surprised. But this changes social media now. Mm-hmm. If, it, this, if this actually happens, this totally changes the game and, and could be the beginning of the end of social media. God willing. Uh, oh, sorry. Was that out loud? Uh. Um, so here's the thing with this, and I'm, I'm actually torn on this because, number one, yes, I do like – I actually like when my social media gets to know me. It's weird. I've, I've made the comparison before. If you go into your neighborhood bar and you sit down and your bartender says, hey, Haggai, want the usual? And he brings you the usual, and it's a scotch poured to the exact limit that you want – uh, he, he makes it the way you want. It's the drink that you want, you order, and you're used to. You've, you've That's been, called you, customer service. You've been in this bar with me. Right. <laughs> That's called customer service. But when social media does it, it's called Big Brother, mm. and it's scary as hell. I don't know where we have that distinction there because there's not a name there's not a face there's not right. like oh yeah that's that's norm he's behind the bar i guess in cheers norm was on the other yeah. side of the bar but that's sam behind the bar right this is not that but at the same time it's the same level of service the flip side of that is if i'm only fed what i already want i can't get something new we're gonna have to pause there because we got a break or check your money now we're gonna check traffic we're coming back He's had Guy Davis. It's Cup of Tech Gumbo. You get your full serving Saturday and Sunday at 4, uh, presented by Cardinal Capital and General Informatics right here on Talk 107.3. Oh, man. All right. Let me log back in. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Good morning, Christy. Saw you texted. I'm super happy you were able to get up this morning. Did Christy go to the daddy-daughter dance? No, Christy got adoration at two o'clock in the morning. Oh my gosh! And Christy's relief did not show up. Christy went to adoration for two hours, not one. Dang. Call her. You're stronger than me, Christy. Christy in the Survivor School of Social Media. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hey. telling you right now, blue blood tonight is going to be a lot of. Hey, are you still up? <laughs> Troy, Troy hit it. I, I see San Francisco as a more of a robot hostage negotiator, emotional support coach kind of town. <laughs> All that money from the robots and put them into hamsters. I can't believe the killer robots didn't pass. There you go, Sean Luke. Sam knows what you want because he pays attention to you when you visit, not because he stalks whatever you do Nailed and wherever it. you go. No, 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 no. That's that, that, that. If there's, it's still cultivation, though. If you sit down, if you sit down and you're talking to Sam and you say, you know, having a rough go of it at work, and he remembers that the next time. He didn't follow you to work, but he remembers you said it. Right. That's 
as opposed to the algorithms who are, are pushed by artificial intelligence. It just, doesn't matter that it's artificial. But they track you across everything you do on the computer. Mm -hmm. It's not just, you know, a conversation on Facebook. Oh, my God. Why is there teams on this thing? Because it's part of Office. I don't... I should get IT in here to clean that thing out. All I need is Google Chrome, and that's it. Get a Chromebook, then. Don't start with me. It's only $100. <laughs> I mean... This, I think I'd have to pay $100 to get rid of it. Don't take, don't ever take anything to the Geek Squad. Unless it's just your home computer. <laughs> Go all you want to talk about, you don't trust algorithms. I don't trust the Geek Squad. That's what I'm saying. Here's every ounce of information I've ever had. Like, okay. That's we're gonna, how Hunter Biden got we're, in trouble. We're going to have to wipe your hard drive and start over. Yeah. We'll have to reload Windows for you. Really? Yeah, that's that's why I can't hit my printer? Yeah. After Creepy Steve gets a look at it. Because you know Creepy Steve is going to get a look at your, your... There's always that one nosy geek. Right? I don't need creepy. I would rather Mark Zuckerberg looking at my stuff than creepy Steve. <laughs> Eric did a switch from Gmail to Outlook. That's. Uh, yeah, I was going to tell you. Cade said, "Get with the schedule is already out, so get with Grant." So. Total fun vibe. <sighs> you don't want to put voice to text. We should do that. That should be the next thing. You know, you shouldn't take tone out of text. Like if you text somebody, to somebody and it's like, that is a great key and peel sketch. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you don't want to take tone. Like, whatever, man. I'm cool. Whatever. It's like, you know what we should do? I was thinking about it. I was, I was watching um, uh, Patty G yesterday on with you. It would be good, instead of having Franz on Wednesday, Patty on Thursday, me, having all of us in for one, like, hour kind of thing and talking the, the legal, the, the business, and the tech side of stories kind of stuff. That would be a little roundtable thing. That would be fun. That would be a big podcast. It would be a great podcast. Let's talk about that for next year. Six fifty two, talk one oh seven three FM WBRP. Sixty seven degrees in downtown Baton Rouge. Mornings with Brian Howell. They rolling right along. It is a cup of tech gumbo. We do this every Friday. Haggai, as we were going on a break, we we're talking about uh meta and needing permission for ads. I mean, this is like this is a level of consent that feels like an SNL sketch. I mean, it really does. Like your computer's gonna stop every five seconds and say, I would like to sell you this. Can I keep going? Like it it just that level of, I, I'm hard pressed not to turn this into like a, a sexual harassment thing, but it's going to be very intrusive. It and, is and it, cumbersome. It's going to be more intrusive and, and cumbersome and not user friendly. And people are going to say, "Screw it! I'm just tired. I'm not. I'm done. I'm done. I'm just quit. Going. I'm not going to go back to Facebook because I'm tired of them asking." Mm -hmm. Right. And so then, and you, meanwhile, Facebook's like, "We're making out. Can I put my hand on your leg?" <laughs> you know, or or Twitter. Or YouTube, or or TikTok, or any one of the platforms that you that you visit. So let me turn this topic though. Did Mark Zuckerberg screw this up by not selling to us sooner? When we watch network television, we have an understanding that in order to get that free content, in order to get Blue Bloods on a Friday night, I'm going to have to stop four to five times during that show to watch commercials and be sold something. When Facebook launched, there weren't ads for the longest time. We were given the impression that that was free to us no matter what. We weren't going to be sold anything when we were there. In fact, in the movie The Social Network, and I don't know how accurate The Social Network was. God bless Aaron Sorkin, such a good movie. But 
in the social network, there's a part where Mark Zuckerberg says, I don't want to sell because we don't know what this is going to be yet. Well, all during that time, we're all cultivating this mindset that this is what Facebook is and always will be. And when it comes time for them to start making some money, we already have the impression built into our heads that, oh, my goodness, now you're going to sell to me? I feel dirty. I, I think that's a bit naive. I, th I think he knew all along as this thing started to really grow that it was going to have to be data scraping no, and, and that's sell what ads. And that's what I'm saying. Did he screw up by waiting so long? There was nothing that was going to stop our mindset from developing that way. It, it, well, it depends on how he might not have been able to sell the ads early That's enough. also possible. And also, it wouldn't have gained the popularity did if it, if it had ads on the front end. That's There's part that of it, too. too. But it's like, you know how around this time of year, if you go to Wikipedia around this time of year, they start asking you for donations? Yes. Isn't that annoying? Because it's like, I get it. I understand why you need those donations to, to function. But at the same time, though, you've always been free to me. You can't start asking me for money now. We're in this thing. Absolutely. And and I, I just, I, I think this whole social media experiment over the past 15 years has really, t again, how many times have, have we said it? If you're, if you're on the internet and you're not paying for it, you're the product, you're, I mean. It, right. It's, it's just... It's going to change mm -hmm. because the European Union is is they're jumping out way way out there in front of everybody else. Our our, our leaders in D.C. are about a decade behind when it comes to social media laws. This the section um, one thirty in the in the Telecom Act that that thing is going to get skewered at some point, mm -hmm. and as soon as it does, everything changes. Yeah. And when it when it does, then the and, and it will it'll be for the betterment of society. <laughs> Everything it, government does is, in uh, the the intention is for it to be the betterment yes. of society. But we we see it every time. You cut a couple trillion dollars worth of checks to get us through COVID, and all of a sudden you have inflation. Like no matter what happens, there will always be unintended consequences. And that's where you have to continually recorrect, and every recorrection leads to more oh, unintended consequences. The 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 law of unintended unintended consequences is real, and it will really hurt. You pull the plug on social media, and now people have to go out and actually talk to people again, and that's going to be a problem. Can you imagine <laughs> that? When somebody walks up to somebody and says something they disagree with face to face. And they don't have an echo chamber to agree with them. Wow! What, what, I, what would, people will melt, Haggai. How how can I go scream so everyone around the world can can know that I'm screaming? Right. Because there's only three people in the room with me. If I scream, nobody outside this room is going to hear me. That's not right. I, I have I have my rights. I can. And be, not about just being heard. It's about being confirmed. It's about being. Yeah, you're right. It's about being patted on the back and, and encouraged. Or or being told, no, what an idiot, blah, blah, blah. Right. You, how stupid can you be to think that way? Right. And, and it doesn't matter if you're from the right or the left. Both both sides think the other side is morons. and But they always have. I mean, that's just nothing new. And But you're able to find middle ground when you have the conversation without the echo oh, chamber. Absolutely. When you, when you actually have a, a conversation, when you're... Having a dialogue with somebody, there's give and take of information. Mm -hmm. When you're on social media, it's just it's a one way blast. Yeah, and it'll be real interesting to see people actually have to talk to people again. That's the crotchety old guy, me, who you yeah, know, I know. <laughs> back in my day, we actually talked to people. We didn't text. You know. But what we've gotten is a, a culture of Ignatius J. Riley's because of it. Yeah. That's a so, great reference. Thank I you. Like that one. Thank you. Confederacy of Dunces, if you're scoring at home. Yes, Mr. O'Toole. Yeah. Tool. John Kennedy Tool. Tool? I thought it was O'Toole. Okay. I mean, okay. Yeah. What else is on the full serving of Tech Gumbo this week? Well, we're going to have um, Professor Abe Begili from LSU. Back on. Here? Yep. He's, he's, uh, wow, he's a good interview. Oh, he's fascinating. Uh, so, so he and his research uh, students, they, they're hacking the metaverse. <laughs> just in time and and they've published papers on it and 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 meta is like yeah 
yeah, okay, we know. Wow. It's, All right. it's fascinating. I mean, it's a great interview. Really enjoyed. Uh, he, he will become a, a, a regular over time with us. No, no doubt. I can see that. No doubt. And you need to tap into a lot of people he works with as well. I know. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that is a fount of resource right there. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we didn't have enough time to get this week to get to the TSA's facial recognition topic. Can oh. you stick around for a couple minutes to talk about this oh, during sure. news at the top of the hour? All right. Because this... <laughs> You want to talk about the comedic results that could have resulted from San Francisco's uh, robot drone, uh, robot bombers? Yeah. Anyway, let's break. CBS World News Roundup coming your way. Full serving of Tech Gumbo Saturday and Sunday at 4 right here on Talk 107.3. All right. The TSA's facial recognition technology, which currently is being used at 16 major domestic airports, may go nationwide next year. Hey, Haggai, haven't we gotten away from facial recognition technology? Because, and I'm going to say this as bluntly as possible. Too many white people work in Silicon Valley? It's... <sighs> Facial recognition was created by white guys, practiced with using white guys, mm -hmm. and white guys are the... Are, it works very well on white guys. It does! But if you're not a white guy, it does. It has a very, very, very poor record of working. Yes! And white guys are not the majority of the world. I know! So when you're talking about barely well, the majority of the country, not even that, not even. I mean, because you've got half the population is it's female. Gross, yes. <laughs> so you're you're going to take this technology that is half ass broken, mm -hmm. and you're going to expand it. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you're doubling down. There are yeah. cities that have outlawed the use of facial recognition. So what happens like in San Francisco or Boston where it's illegal to use fake facial recognition, but here's the TSA saying, oh, we're rolling that out here. And then who trumps it? What, who plays the trump card? Does the Fed say, hey, we don't care what your local laws are. This is the mm -hmm. federal airport. We have to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now this And now once we know that somebody can trump local laws... You're at your again. This gets back to where's Franz, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's yeah. Patrick, you know, mm -hmm. and, and this idea. I mean, this is a, I mean, having that, that four phased angle of this. Okay. First question Where the is the ACLU? Oh, they're coming. Okay. Don't, don't swear. I mean, this, there's no way this just, no, there's not good to have this just floating out there and nobody's going to complain. I mean, the fact that. Where's the ACL been, ACLU been that there's 16 airports already doing this? <laughs> it should be really white airports, yeah, guy. <laughs> I mean, this is Salt Lake City. I mean, well, no, don't bring up Denver and that Illuminati airport. I know, right? That's Stapleton or Denver International. It's not called Stapleton anymore. That was the old, old one was Stapleton. Oh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking like, you know, Cheyenne, Wyoming. This probably works pretty well. Yeah, you know, you know Boise, Montana. Yeah, or, Billings. Uh, you know, Billings, Montana, and Boise, Idaho. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but not Chicago. No, not Los Angeles, no. New York City, no. the ATL. You know, no Miami, Miami New not Orleans. No, I mean, not flying into Moisant with this one. No, <laughs> Moisant. Oh, Louis Armstrong. Excuse me. Right. New Orleans Airport. That was old. Fly. Yeah, if you, the, the airline board. code for New Orleans is MSY. It Moisant is it's what it used to Moisant, be. Moisant Stockyard. Yeah, that's why. Because it was it used to be the Moisant Stockyard a hundred years ago. And I that, just it kept I just it. Moisant. I just was, might as well said take the G and O to get there. Well, that's <laughs> on the other side of the city, but still, like here I, I name an old stuff. All right, I mean, yeah, Louis Armstrong Airport. Sorry. Yep. Next one. Yeah, this ain't no pun intended, the, but the, this ain't gonna fly. The the um, FAA doesn't like to use N for like instead of being NOLA because all the naval bases start with N. Yeah, that's true. So that's why you don't have airports that with Newark or or any of those. It would be Orleans, but that would be Orlando. Or you know, yeah, MSY made the most sense at the time. Still does. I love the fact that our code. Has nothing to do with the name. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 Louisiana enough. But that's right a little there. piece of trivia for you. Most people don't know the what MSY is the Mo Moisant Stockyard. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. 
So now, there you go. You learned something today, Facebook. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, I, TSA is going to have to throw this out. So I don't know why there's not already a class action lawsuit looking to get paid billions of dollars for the racism built into this. So the first time this goes wrong, the first time somebody is stopped and accused of something in, because of the facial recognition that's when it gets blown up. Wait, but why wait? I, why I, wait? I think it's a horrible idea it that is, they're doing everybody this. Everybody knows it's a horrible idea. This is just, just, oh my God! If you could, you could, you would have to really go long and hard trying to find something that is a worse idea than doing this. Here's another question with this, though: What's the federal government going to do with this data? Where are they storing? How long are they keeping all of this facial recognition? Are they going to, oh, look, here comes Haggai again. Once a month, he's flying out of the, the Baton Rouge airport. Mm -hmm. Hmm, I wonder if he's taking Uber. Let's sell Uber ads to Haggai. Time to get a look at your forecast. Here is WBRZ meteorologist Marissa Nuzzo. Yeah, you're taking all these trips and you're not making money. The IRS would like to have a word with you. Um, you know, uh, or there's all kinds of things that you can do with this data. What's going on? I, I, it scares the crap out of yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, seriously, Alan Stanwick's flying to Provo, Utah once a month. I mean, he, he, you know, burns enough jet fuel to go to Mexico and back. <laughs> what you doing? You doing some stunt flying up there? <laughs> That's Fletch, by the way. Yeah. Alan Stanwick. All right, never mind. Yeah. Bye, Facebook. Yeah. Appreciate you. Guys. Hey, um, 